So now we're going to talk a little bit about training for the three peaks. So one of the things that we've, uh, that we've found is that people generally have around about 10 hours of training a week. And the program that we put together is based on that assumption. So if some people may have a little bit less and some people may have a little bit more. And that's fine. If you have a bit more time, then all you need to do is just increase the volume of training that you're doing in the weekends and just keep the rest of the program about the same. Now, one of the things that we have done is that we have induced, introduced uh, high intensity efforts into the training to help supplement the fact that we've reduced the amount of volume of training that we're doing in the weekend because of that 10 hour time restriction. And the high intensity efforts are really, really important part of the program. And what they do is they, you know, what they do is they teach your body to basically ride fast, all right? And that's one of the big issues around what we've found with people is that when they do a very low intensity, high volume type of program, um, training up for an event like this, that's fantastic, but it doesn't, it actually trains them or teaches them to ride slow, okay? So by introducing the high intensity training into the program, we're enabled obviously substitute training that we would do on the weekend and reduce the amount of time, so you can spend more time with your family and maybe at work or whatever. Um, and it also means that it improves your average speed uh, on your riding, okay? So it means that you're able to compete and, uh, in the event and ride it uh, in a shorter period of time, all right? So the other, other two really important things uh, about the program is that it's really important to get in that consistency, all right? And the consistency is that you've noticed that the program's structured around uh, six days with one day off. So seven day a week, six days of training, one day off. And we've built it with a gradual build um, and intensity. And it's important to get that consistency, all right? So the consistency is really important. Uh, in the training. And the other really important thing is the amount of vertical meters climbed. And we do that mainly in the weekend. Uh, and that number that we have for the amount of vertical meters climbed is very, very important because obviously the Three Peaks events a lot about the amount of vertical meters. It's a, it's a big epic ride, a lot of distance, um, but also a lot of vertical meters climbed. So it's really, really important that you do focus on getting out there and in climbing hills, you know, and the best training for, for events that have hills in them is training with hills in them. So that makes sense, doesn't it? So that's why it's really important to look at those vertical meters in the program and make sure that you, you're meeting or exceeding those particular values for the week and meeting those targets, all right? Okay, so a couple of points about the vertical meters. When we talk about vertical meters, what we're doing is the overall ride vertical meters. So for some people that don't have big hills in their area, like if the vertical meters for the particular um, ride are 750 or 1,000 vertical meters for that particular ride, if you've only got a hill around your area that's local that's 100 meters, then 1,000 meters is 10 repeats on that hill. So you would do that hill 10 times, and that would give you 1,000 vertical meters. So you don't need to go out and find a hill that's 1,000 vertical meters long. There's only a few here in Australia anyway. So, so what's important is getting that vertical meters into your climbing. Now the other thing is that some people are very unfortunate, you know, Australia is a flat place and some people live in areas where there may be no real big major hills. So how do we supplement that? So the only way to do that, and it's a great way to do it, is that you want, what you want to do is you want to find a headwind and most areas that are flat usually have days that are quite windy. So you want to put yourself into a headwind and you want to drive yourself into that headwind at about 80 RPM, all right? and supplement your hill climbing by doing that training on the flat. So into the headwind, 80 RPM, keep the cadence fairly low but not really low, all right, and drive yourself into that headwind. And that'll supplement hill climb training. So, so there's a couple of ways um, to supplement that hill climb training, all right? If you are interested in finding out anything more about our training or coaching services, then certainly jump on our website and visit Cycling Inform. Uh, great information on the website, have a look around. Uh, you can contact us with any questions that you may have about the program, training in general, nutrition, hydration,